بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمة We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having inshallah a very blessed session As you remember, we were talking about Hadith 29 of 40 Hadith and that uh, set of instructions given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Uh, number four that we discussed last week was about crying out of fear. and out of having khashya. Number five is al-khamisatu bazluka malaka wa damaka duna dinik to spend your money and to give your blood for your faith. So if keeping and protecting your Iman needs to spend money, you should not be hesitant. If it needs giving your life, you should not be hesitant. Although it might be difficult, but you should not doubt because faith is the most important thing that we have and whether it is my own particular faith or faith in the sense that protecting our religion from attacks from I don't know destruction and heresy deviation and so on and so forth of course when needed and this has to be measuredly decided and this has to be according to the uh, views of people who are qualified leaders but in general we should not be thinking that it's Uh, you know, too much for me to give money or to give my life for my religion. Then uh, Imam Khomeini has discussion about part six. Uh, he doesn't discuss that much about part five, maybe because it's clear and also maybe because we will talk about Sadaqa in part six. So that is a kind of experience. Uh, spending your money so it will be somehow discussed although giving money for faith is more than just sadaq as-sadisatu al-akhdu bi-sunnati fi salati wa sawmi wa sadaqati rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the sixth thing that i advise you is to take my sunnah means to follow my sunnah With respect to salati, wasawmi, wasadaqati, he so much loves these three, and also because these three are very important part of his sunnah. His, uh, so he says salati, wasawmi, wasadaqati. So there is a close connection between Rasulullah and these three. And then he elaborates. He says, "Amma salatu fal khamsuna raka'a." Salat is not just obligatory salat. When we say salat, we mean those uh, daily prayers which are obligatory and those daily prayers which are recommended. So al faraid wa nawafil. 17 rak'ah wajib and 34 rak'ah mustahab but rasulullah says fal khamsuna rak'ah 50 rak'ah so a question arises here why instead of 51 he says 50 so that's next chapter that we have is about explaining the number of nawafil so wajibat 17 is clear but nawafil 
is it 51 or is it 50? So this is the question. He says 50 means 17 rak'ah of uh, faraid and 33 rak'ah of nawafil. Nafilatul Fajr, two raka, Nafilatul Zorf, eight raka, Nafilatul As, eight raka, Nafilatul Maghrib, four. Then we have Salatul Layl, eleven. The only thing that would be not counted is the Nafila of Salatul Asha. When we sit and uh, you know, we do two raka. Uh, nafila after Salat al which is considered as one rak'ah, that one rak'ah is not counted. If we say 51, it means that we have counted that as well. So the question is, why there is such a situation with this particular nafila? If it is part of our daily nawafil, so why we say 50? If it is not, why we say 51? So this is a question. So he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned 50, maybe because these 50 are the most important ones. They are not at the level of that one. 51 is very important, but 50 is the most important, and that one is not equal in significance to other nawafil. For example, Ibn Abi Umair narrates that I asked Imam Sadiq alayhi salam an afdal ma jarat bih sunnatu min as salat. What is the best thing that we have in our sunnah, sunnah of the Prophet, about salat? So the best sunnah of salat, what is this? And Imam Sadiq, according to this hadith, said, Tamamul Khamsin, compilation of 50. So if you do 50, you can say you have done the job. Because the great part of it is 50. And he says from some hadith, we can understand that Rasulullah used to do 50. But from some hadith, we see that Rasulullah used to do also that one which is called Atama. Atama, Ain Tamim, in Arabic is used for the time. In some books of Lugha, it says Atama to Layl, Zalamu Avalhi Ba'da Zawal Nur Shafaq. When the light in the west when the sun is setting there is still some light and also on the east you know we have Humray Mashriqiyah that we say you know when that Humray Mashriqiyah disappears opposite to where sun sets there is you know uh, redness when that disappears it is Maghreb but still on the west when where sun is setting, there is some light. When light, light disappears, then it is time for Salatul Asha. Of course, you check your marja, but I'm generally speaking. In Arabic, that time is called Atam. Therefore, some people have said Atamatul Layl Waktu Salatul Asha. So the first one third of the night after Shafaq disappears, this is Atama. Or some people have said Atamatul Layl Zalamu Avalhi Ba'd Zawal Nur Shafaq. In any case, according to some hadith, Rasulullah used to say 50 rakah. According to some hadith, Rasulullah used to say this 50 plus that. Uh, salat that we do sitting after Salatul Isha, Nafilatul Isha, which is also called Atama.
Then he has a very beautiful idea here inspired by some hadith that actually the reason for legislation of this one rak'ah, which is two rak'ah sitting but is counted as one rak'ah because Nawafel, if you do sitting, every two rak'ah is like one rak'ah. <coughs> the reason for legislation of this one rak'ah seems to be to uh, help us with not missing altogether the merit of the last rak'ah of Salatul Layl, which is very important. That one rak'ah, because Salatul Layl is four in two, and then two, and then one. That one rak'ah is so important that if, for example, we die, or we become unconscious, and we are going to miss it for any reason, at least we have done this two rak'ah sitting so that we don't miss all the merits. But if we are alive at that time of uh, Salatul Layl, we should do it even if we have done this before. So this is a kind of substitute, but in case you are not able to do it later, so that you don't lose it altogether. So this is also what we can understand from some hadith and uh, Imam Khomeini also mentions here and also he gives reference, you know, the, in the footnote there is also reference to hadith, for example, Abu Basir says this from Imam Sadr alayhi salam. So either this one is not equally important compared to others or this one is in order not to miss altogether uh, the last rakah of Salatul Layl. And maybe also uh, this one is in order to make a good uh, kind of round balance of you know saying that 17 is wajib and 34 nafila and uh, to make it you know 51 and you know twice of wajibat of course we cannot do such things but those who have authority Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on his uh, behalf then uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they can say that you know you should do this one raka extra because salat is always good and they have the authority to ask us to do one particular salat although in itself every salat is mustahab but they can say you do this more for example any case i think the main thing is that we should get used to doing this nawafil as much as possible ahlul bayt alayhimussalam were expecting their Shia not to do only wajibat, to do wajibat and these daily nawafil at least. We have lots of salat mustahab, but these 34 which are nawafil yawmiyyah, daily ritual prayers, but the recommended ones, these are very, very important. Even if you miss them, you can do qadha. Normally, most have things normally, most of them, they don't have qadha, but this has qadha. S there are exceptional mustahabat that have qadha. These have qadha because they are so important. And these are completion of our wajib salat. As remember, we said before that if we don't have presence of heart in wajib salat, these help. So, Ahlul Bayt Musalam very much expected their followers to do both wajibat and nawafil. For example, there is a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Shi'atuna ahlul wara'i wal ijtihad wa ahlul wafa'i wal amanah wa ahlul zuhdi wal ibadah 
و اصحاب الاحدا و خمسین رکعه فالیوم و لیله Our Shia are people who have t- wara'ah, we talked about wara'ah, people of ijtihad means they work hard, ahlul wafa'i wal amana, they are loyal and trustworthy, ahlul zuhd wal ibada, they have ascetic life and they do ibada, and people of 51 rak'ah in every day and night, means in 24 hours, they do 30, uh, 51, sorry, 51 rak'ah. القائمون بالليل الصائمون بالنهار They are people who do uh, salat al-layl in the night they stand up for ibadah الصائمون بالنهار They fast during the day يزكون أموالهم They give zakat and killing their money ويحجون البيت They do hajj ويجتنبون كل محرم And they avoid any haram These are the Shia according to the Ahl Bayt and also in Alamatul Mu'min that, that famous hadith from Imam Askari السلام, one is 51 rak'ah prayer so we are expected to do nawafil and if we are not able to do all of them at least Salatul Layl as we will talk about it later at least some of the nawafil so that we are counted as people who are doing nawafil. I hope we can train ourselves to do all of them, inshallah. Unfortunately, our lifestyle has become uh, so uh, much, you know, far from Islamic way of life that sometimes it's not possible or sometimes we find it, you know, extremely difficult because we are not used to such life that puts Salat in its central position so after this discussion then we have about fasting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that so, sal, uh, salati wa sawmi wa sadaqati and recommended to do three days of fasting at least so Imam Khomeini here says that it was the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to fast three days of every month of course I think this you, you know you understand that should be the minimum maybe in some months he fasted more for example in months of Raja months of Sha'ban but the minimum was three days every month and he says there are about 40 hadith on this subject that Rasulullah used to do this. And he refers uh, in the footnote, uh, there is a reference to Vasa Lushia, volume 7. And there is a whole s- chapter about um, recommended fasting. And there are many hadith about this. So about the idea of fasting three days every month there is no ambiguity but then which three days there's a discussion here among ulama and Imam Khomeini says what is more famous and is also compatible with many hadiths and the seerah of the Prophet towards the end of his life and also the seerah of Ahlul Bayt is to fast <laughs> the first Thursday of the month so in for example month of Dhul Qa'da we are now in the month of Dhul Qa'da the first Thursday and you know Thursday is the day of Ard A'mal means our actions are presented for example in the time of the Prophet they were presented to the Prophet now they are presented to Imam of our time so every Thursday our a'mal, our deeds are presented. This is of course one presentation because it's not that Imam doesn't know till Thursday comes. There is weekly presentation, there is yearly presentation, but they constantly know what we are doing. So the first Thursday of the month 
and then the first Wednesday in the second 10 days of the month. So from day 11, see the nearest Wednesday. So the first Wednesday in the second 10 nights of the month. And then the last Thursday. This second 10 days not only it is important because then in every 10 days you have fasted but also these days are especially selected because two of them are Thursday and presentation of A'mal and that Wednesday which is the first Wednesday in the second 10 days it seems it's a day that uh, some previous nations were uh, punished their azab was sent in that day and we want to avoid that so you can fast any three days and inshallah you will get the great reward and as uh, you know we have also here some hadith says man ja'a bil hasana fa lahu ashru amsalaha whoever brings uh, one hasana will be rewarded 10 times so three days means 30 days you'll be rewarded for 30 days so it's almost like you have been fasting of course if you fast 30 days it would be like 300 days so it means that every year you fasted 10 years but at least with three days you have fasted like one month any days but if you want to act uh, uh, very particularly according to what Rasulullah sallallahu suggested it's better to choose these three days although as I said if someone says you know I get confused or for me weekend is better I don't know Friday is better okay no problem get any three days but if you want to have in addition to uh, mustahab fasting this particular way of fasting three days first Thursday of the month and then the first Wednesday of the second 10 days and the last Thursday this is very important may Allah inshallah give us tawfiq uh, there is also a hadith that uh, this hadith says that if this is Mursali Sheikh Sadu, Sheikh Sadu narrates this hadith that, for example, if in one ten days in the third part we have two Thursdays, it's possible. Suppose that twenty, for example, first of the month becomes Thursday, twenty eighth also becomes Thursday. So we have two Thursdays in the ten days. We said last Thursday. There is a hadith that says if two Thursdays uh, fall in the last 10 days, you can fast, you should fast the first one. And if you are alive and uh, witness the last Thursday, then fast last Thursday. Imam Khomri says there is no conflict here. This shows that what is important is the last one. But because we may miss that last one, we do the first one. So you shouldn't say there is a conflict here. What is the priority is last Thursday. But in case we may miss that, we do the first Thursday in the last 10 days when two Thursdays come in the last 10 days. And then about Sadaqa. Rasulullah said, Salati wa sawmi wa sadaqati which is mustahab not only wajib wajib of course it's bottom line we have salat wajib we have sawm wajib we have sadaqi wajib which is zakat and khums but it's more than that in the same way that salat is not only wajib we have recommended salat to bring we have recommended fasting to bring also we have recommended enfaq 
something more than your obligatory infaq. And there are lots of beautiful hadith here and this discussion, I think it's good that we leave part of it for the next week, but at least let me have some of it today. Shaykh Kulayni Rahmatullah Alay narrates from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Laysa shay'un athqala ala shaytan min as-sadaqati ala al-mu'min. There is nothing heavier for shaytan than giving sadaqa to mu'min. Shaitan is very troubled if you give sadaqa to a believer. وَهُوَ تَقَعُوا فِي يَدِ الرَّبْ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى قَبْلَ أَنْ تَقَعَ فِي يَدِ الْعَبْدِ And your sadaqa before reaching the hand of that person who receives is received by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Man dhalladhi yuqridhu Allah qardan hasana. Allah consider this as if we are giving to him. And we are lending him. So, it is something that Allah has a special regard for it. Of course, we have and in many hadiths, and Imam Khomeini also mentions here, it can be for people who have also different faith. It can be even for people who are maybe not have no faith. It can be even for animals. Uh, charity has no limit. But when we are talking about as al mu'min, this is where the necessity becomes more. Otherwise, every human being, we have to be responsible and help. Every living being, we have to be responsible and help. But there are degrees and levels. Another hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Inna Allah. And this hadith is very important. And Imam Khomeini has uh, some comments or some reflections on this. We will leave it for next week. But it's very important hadith. So please remember this hadith. Inna Allah lam yakhluq shay'an. Imam Sadiq salam said, Allah has not created anything illa wallahu khazinun yakhzunuhu illa sadaqah. Everything that Allah has created, there is a being or group of being that save it, keep it. Khazin means someone who keeps something, stores something. Everything there has khazan. Even Jahannam has khazan. Everything has one or some who are responsible for protecting and preserving and keeping and storing. Illa sadaqa. Except sadaqa. Fa inna rabba yaliha bin Allah says. <laughs> I am, of course, uh, rewarding, uh, rephrasing. Allah says, I want to deal with sadaqa myself. Inna rab yaliha binafsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala undertakes sadaqa by himself. This is so much Allah loves sadaqa. Wa kana abi, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Iza kana abi, iza tasaddaqa bishay'in. My father, Imam Baqir, Whenever he was giving sadaqah, he was putting this sadaqah in the hand of the person who was asking for help. You know, sometimes we have faqir, sometimes we have miskin, sometimes we have sa'il. Sa'il is the one who asks for help. Because faqir and miskin, sometimes they don't ask for help. But if they ask, it becomes sa'il. And faqir and miskin can be used interchangeably, but normally miskin might be the one who is more needy. 
in Mafatihul Hayat also, we talked about, you know, we had lots of discussion uh, by Ayatollah Jawad Yamuri about the issue of charity. We talked about this also, Sa'il and the people who are not asking, all of them. Anyway, when my father, Imam Sadiq says, when my father was giving sadaqah, he was putting in the hand of Sa'il. So someone is coming and asking for help. So you give him something. Imam was putting in the hand of Sa'il, then taking that sadaqa again and kissing it and smelling it and putting it back. Why? Because Allah has taken that sadaqa. So it's now blessed. When it was in my hand, it was not a special. When I give it to that person, it becomes a special. And imagine how much also respect you are giving also to that person that when his hand has touched this then you take it and smell it and kiss it and give it back means i was not able to make it that blessed you made it that blessed because you acted as an agent for allah subhanahu wa therefore you have helped me more than i helped you i helped you with money but you helped me with light with baraka with touch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Kana Abi Ida Tasadaka Bishayen Wadahu fi Yadis Sail Summartadahu min Fakabalahu was Shammahu Summaradahu fi Yadis Sail. My father, whenever he was giving Sadaka, he was putting in the hand of the person who asked for help and then taking back, kissing, smelling, and then putting back in the hand of Sail. And this shows that how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves sadaqah, that he keeps it himself. He undertakes uh, protection of your sadaqah and growth of your sadaqah by himself. And as soon as you give, even before that person receives, it is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Khomeini says that uh, this is also a way to make sure that you are humble because if billah, you give sadaqa and you annoy that person by man by trying to oblige that person in the negative sense that saying oh I have given you either that time or later Annoying people or you know saying take this and never come again. I don't want to see you anymore. These things will waste and damage your act of sadaqat. And maybe na'uzubillah even you are sinning by doing this because you annoy a person, you damage respect of that person. This can be a big sin, a major sin. So we have to be very careful. We are not supposed to think that we are doing a favor to that person. Of course, those people also should be hesitant in coming and asking for help. And, you know, it's very much recommended that you don't go and ask for help as much as you can. But that's their part. Now, if someone comes to me, I should think that maybe this person is very needy. And because he's desperate, he couldn't have waited more. I should think it in this way I should give credit of doubt of course there are lots of discussions here if you want more discussion please go to Mafatihul Hayat where we, when we discuss about Sadaqah that uh, for example what should we do if you are not sure you know this type of things we discussed it over there I think I stop here uh, because this discussion about Sadaqah is very beautiful beautiful hadith I don't want to rush so that we can absorb inshallah more these hadith i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to inshallah perform our nawafil and wajibat together fast inshallah three days in every month and to help the needy people to the extent that as rasulullah said you think you are doing too much you are doing israf but there is no israf here.
ان شاء الله ويل كونتينيو ديسكشن الحمد لله رب العالمين الله